on the last video, the Marvel clock got an upgrade and it can now update the time every minute. But from the beginning of this series, some of us have been joking with the idea of building a marble clock that can update the time every second. Every second! And I, I feel the need to show you that your comments or my crazy ideas aren't taken lightly on this channel. So throwing out the window the last bit of sanity left, I'm going to build one. To update the time every second, we need to do everything required to display a new digit every second. And that's not a lot. The first thing that I need to do is to quickly swap the digits that make the time. But even with all the marble selected, in place and ready to go, the original marble clock takes way more than one second just to discard the old set of digits. And it takes more than five seconds to do the swap. And forget about selecting the marbles that make the digits. That, that takes forever. <laughs> we already know that. And if we try to do just single digits, it improves, but not by a lot. and definitely not under a second. It gets a little bit better if we increase the angle, but it doesn't get much better. And it doesn't work very well either. Stop. To maximize our chances of success, we can scale down the digits. With a 3 by 5 matrix, just 50 marbles, any digit from 0 to 9 can be drawn. And that should help with speed. And now we can try what lots of you have been suggesting in the comments, by the thousands, and go vertical. This is clearly better and very close to what we need. But if we take the amount of time that the marbles take to draw, which is more or less a third of a second, and then drop another set of marbles that takes another third of a second, in the best of cases, it leaves us just a third of a second to read the time. And that's why I shouldn't be trying to do this. And that's why we need to find another way. Vertically, we have nowhere to go. The digits are as short as they can be, and unless I finish my gravity controlling machine, we cannot make them go any faster. We could send this to Jupiter, but more reasonable than sending this to Jupiter would be to stop thinking about up and down and start thinking about back to front. The idea is to pre-select all the marbles for the new digit at the back and then replace all the marbles at the front in one single strike. Easy, right? The best way that I found to do this is to imitate one of these toys where the kinetic energy of one marble is transferred to the next. Obviously, I cannot start hanging every single marble from a pair of strings. So I printed all these ramps in here to make some tests and see if I can use a ramp to do exactly what this does. And seeing how well the steel marbles on this toy bounce, I listened to another one of your demands in the comments and bought this. 2,000 steel marbles. Let's see if I can make this work with, with this. I made lots of runs. Some of them did let both marbles escape and others got both marbles trapped. But in the end, this is the winning design. It has a bump at the end so the marble doesn't fall over, then a small ramp to ensure that the remaining marble goes all the way to the end, and then an 11 degree ramp that accelerates the striking marble just the right amount so it does the marble swap just right every single time. Now that we have the solution to make the marble swap for one marble, we need a solution to make it for 15 marbles all at once. That's why I printed this. Upstream, we will have the marble selection mechanism that sends the proper marble to each one of these 15 holes. But in here we need to stop the marbles and then release them so the 15 marbles are swapped at once and also to be sure that they don't come too fast and the system fails. And I wanted the marbles to be spaced as tightly as possible. And you can already see that this digit is way larger than this one. And that doesn't leave much space for anything. And I tried to design a gate and I haven't been very successful. 
they either fail printing or they are like too flimsy. So I took advantage of PCB Waste 3D printing service and made this. And it was super easy. I just designed the new gate, went to PCBWay.com and uploaded the design, checked if everything was okay, chose the right material for the application, in this case aluminium, because I want this part to be light, chose the amount and sent my order. And in a few days the gate was here. And PCB Way not only does 3D printing in awesome materials like aluminium, stainless steel or nylon, they also do sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, injection molding and lots more. As you can see the process is super easy and the quality is top notch. So give PCB Way a try with the link in the description and now let's release some marbles. And now for each one of these 15 channels we need to get into each one of these 15 holes the marble of the right color for each digit. But I don't know if you can spot the issue. These all look the same. Reaching into the vast wealth of knowledge that is the comment section of my videos, I got a few ideas about how to turn this black. First was black anodizing which according to my extensive five minutes of research can't be done because these are already chrome and you cannot analyze chrome as far as I know. Then someone floated the idea of vapor deposition coating, which without the bank account of a small country is basically impossible. And heating the marbles felt like a great idea at first until I realized that by getting the same color twice was almost impossible. The colors were there, look how cool this looks. But it was quite impossible to do it twice in a row. Impossible. And I even considered going full Nile Red and buying some muriatic acid to dissolve the chrome in the marbles, but, but I think I lack the knowledge to stay alive doing that, so, so no. But after what felt like a lifetime of trials, success. Heating the marbles until they are red hot then quenching them in oil and finally a bath in the cold bluing liquid and then doing that 11 times per marble. Yes, you heard that right, 11. That's not a process, that's a lifestyle choice. Like Each one of the cycles takes a little bit less than five minutes per marble. I managed to get 60 black marbles and this took me an entire week. Non-stop doing this. And of course this is nasty stuff, so I had to do it wearing always proper protection. It was a nightmare. Maybe, maybe this is not a good idea after all. But obviously it's too late to figure out if this was a good idea or not. I'm too deep into this. And, and we have the black marbles, so let's get into the next step. We have two clearly different colored marbles. I need a way to choose between one or the other for each one of the 15 channels. I've been testing different selection methods and I like this one a lot. Just by moving this part in here you can choose between black and silver marbles. And I like it so much that I even need a triple version that fills an entire row. But the issue with this system is that it requires to be able to stop in three positions to work. Left and right to pick up a marble and in the middle position to release it. And I really want to operate this clock with solenoids and these only have two position stops. So I made this. After this small scale test that selects the marbles for one channel, 
I made this that selects the marbles for an entire row. This has six input channels and selects the marbles for three output channels. It has three release gates and three selection gates, and the three selection gates are connected to each other with this stick. And we just now need a bracket and a solenoid put together. And with this, we are good for one row, but this, this obviously needs to get crazier, so I have a whole lot more of this. This is starting to look a lot like actual clock making. When I assembled each one of the five plates, I showed you that the selection gates are all connected and actuated by a solenoid. And now when doing the vertical assembly, all the release gates are connected in three vertical groups through these levers in here. And now to make things even more complicated, we are going to add three solenoids in here to move them. And those were the last three solenoids, and I wired everything to these 16 relays. I need two relays for each one of the solenoids, because these are latching solenoids, meaning that they need the voltage reversed to switch positions. And the last thing that I need to do before testing it is to add some ramps in here as a buffer, because I don't have yet the marble selection mechanism, and we need to be able to have a few more marbles here in the back. Probably most of you have guessed that this is a mechanical multiplexer, and by doing a combination of the top and side solenoids, I can choose which marbles get to the end. While I'm doing the testing, I will be using only silver marbles, because I only have 60 black marbles for now, and filling this up just took about 400. <laughs> So let's see first if it works just with silver marbles and then we'll see what we can do. And I added this kind of barrier around the thing to minimize how many marbles go to the floor. We'll see. Okay, the solenoids are energized. It's almost working, but I'm having this teeny tiny issue with these marbles in here. As you can see, these channels aren't being empty. And the one minor inconvenient with this design is that first, I can see nothing between layers. And the second one is that this assembly lid is a nightmare. To see what's going on inside, I basically have to disassemble everything, every single screw, every single part. <laughs> it takes a while, but I think I figured out where the issue is. Steel marbles plus magnets equals bad, bad. It's bad. It's really bad, bad. I mentioned before that I'm using latching solenoids, and these can stay open or closed without being energized. But that means that to stay close, they have these magnets in here. And the marbles stick to the magnets. And the rows that are causing the issues are the ones closer to the solenoids. Which I think is what's causing those marbles to be temporarily magnetized. As you can see, the marbles stick together when they pass next to the solenoids. And that only happens when they pass through the channel that is closest to the solenoids. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the issue. And I hope that the solution is as easy as it seems because I just made longer brackets that will put the solenoids farther from the marbles or at least far enough for them to not get magnetized. And I just have to just reassemble everything again and <laughs> see if this works or not. Just give me a second. And, and by a second, I just mean like three hours, four tops. 
I'll be right back. Yes, 105 M3 screws, 30 M4 screws, 10 M5 screws, the five brackets for the solenoid, and everything went in in order, so we are ready to try again. I will just try to release one marble from each channel, just, just to see if something is getting stuck. From the front, it's quite difficult to see if everything is working, but if we take a look at the input trace at the back, we can clearly see that it is working perfectly. And of course, we can make it go faster. It looks like we have now a proper marble selector, so we now need a way to join this to this. So I made this. Okay, that seems more or less a complete setup to swap a single digit. I'm still missing a way of picking the marbles from the front and feeding them back here. And I can tell you that loading this every time that I want to make a test is, is quite a task. And even more important, I don't have enough black marbles to make this run continuously to fine tune the speed. But in the end, I think we've made good progress, so don't forget to subscribe if you want to see how this ends. As always, thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members, thank you! And now please go and make something!